when it comes to luxury, they're known for having like huge amounts of, uh, of, of, of additional funds to be able to support their business and do so many other great, amazing things. But when it comes to this pandemic, for sure, there are some that struggled, absolutely. And I like to boil it down to the fact that they just simply weren't prepared. And, you know, it's difficult because as we know, certain brands are no longer with us because they just weren't, they weren't prepared. Their P&Ls were not healthy. We talk about Barney's, for example, you know, they're no longer, you know, you have Neiman Marcus, for example, they filed for bankruptcy. Just a few examples of a couple of companies that were putting strategies in place to move forward, but clearly not expecting something like this and also were not prepared. So in a lot of ways, some companies were caught with their pants down for lack of a better term. And uh, the thing is that there was an article mentioned uh, in Vogue Business Index, if I'm not mistaken, they did a poll. Uh, there were 8,400 people who provided feedback on the online experience for luxury brands. And they were not pleased with the online experience for these luxury brands. And as everything shut down, as we know, online presence was critically important. And so for the brands that actually had one already established, they were able to sustain or at least survive the experience. But for some of the others, they, they struggled in a, in a great way and it was quite challenging. But that online experience is so critical and so important and you really had to get that right. And I think that some of the luxury brands really focused on just making sure that they continue to focus on in-store brick and mortar experiences between sales associate and client and kind of saying, because we're luxury, because we're exclusive, and our clients don't necessarily shop online, we're not going to focus as much on that part of the business. And that we're just gonna focus on the in-store experience. And by doing that and not being forward thinking, I believe that it certainly played a factor. Now, you have some companies that just took a very strong stance and said, we'll never put our product and be able to offer it online. Chanel, for example, you can go online to Chanel, but you're not going to be able to purchase anything. And they were very clear in the middle of the pandemic that they're never going to sell apparel and their shoes and bags. Like they're, they're not going to do that. And so they're taking a position. But we're talking about a luxury company. Clearly, they must have a significant amount of funds to be able to survive. So they are able to do that, which is amazing. But at the same time, it's like this trajectory of online presence and omni-channel and e-telling it's happening, it's happening fast and it's been moved forward significantly over this past year. And so it would just be, I think, a disservice to loyalists of the brand that are not able to experience it in that way, at least in some kind of a way. And I'm not saying that is the solution for Chanel, but I'm just saying for some of the other brands that are not quite ready, they definitely need to step it up in that area.